Welcome back everyone to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Today, or right now, we have a moment of respite. From head to toe, Semyon's body ached. He'd been working in a bauxite mine from dawn till dusk, and he only now managed to find time to regain his bearings outside that darn hole he had spent all day in. Once an officer in the NKVD, Semyon was no now no better down than a uh, captive to his captors. Certainly not the glory he had envisioned, to say the least. Slacking off again, Red, the familiar voice made Simeon groan. At least I know when to stop before I drive myself mad, missed the dude. He didn't even bother look at who shot the snide greeting his way. The young fascist, a large fellow named Anatoly, chuckled as he took a seat next to Simeon. They intend to work us to death, you know. I've seen a few guys drop already. The guards don't seem to care. They just walk past like nothing happened. Simeon had seen it too. Men too weak for hard labor with a gun to their back collapsing hopelessly in a place with no light. I don't know what's worse. Dealing with dead men walking or walking with fascist pigs like you, Anatoly. And the fascist gave an empty laugh. It doesn't matter who we were, Bolshevik. All they see are bodies for the mines. We're all brothers down here, whether we like it or not. And with that, Anatoly made his way back towards the mine's entrance with his tools in hand. Deep down, Simeon knew that he spoke the truth. Part of him hoped that his former enemy would come back out of that pit alive. Bitter foes stuck in the same decrepit boat. But they deserve what they get. Cool, birth in an industry, shall we? Yes, we shall. To the best of our abilities, the, far, the harsh wastelands of the Far East have been tamed. Vast ranges of featureless tundra have been cleared for ambitious new construction projects, and our newly established mines are hard at work ensuring that we have an innumerable supply of natural wealth at our disposal. All that remains now is to put all this new space to good use. It won't be easy, but the Far East must be industrialized if we are to stand any chance again of our rivals to the West. Through toil and sweat, we shall give birth to a Siberian industrial powerhouse of our own. How do we get 500 manpower? Where did that come from? Hmm. Cool. Well, it's gone now. Our poverty is slowly getting better, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Agriculture slowly going up. We have mass mechanization, which is kind of nice. Basic literacy, rudimentary factory lines, army professionalism going is blah, 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 blah. army professionalism is going up. And I think we'll get. Ooh, we, we gotta do that next. Actually, let's cut that down. No, thank you. Cut. Yes, good. And we shall do Japanese investments. With the fall of the RFP, our government has become the inheritor of all the contacts between the Japanese and their businesses or business interests. While well, previously their support only came in the form of war material and covert aid or unification of the region means that the proverbial door is officially open to the Japanese. We still no reason why this shouldn't be encouraged as Zaibatsu have much to offer and their investments would be a significant boost to the economy. Let us reach out to them and let them know that our Russia would be an enthusiastic and a willing partner in a good amount of trade deals. We can close that one out for now. Relations are currently high which I would love to uh, explore. Well, actually, you know what, we probably can. How much more industry are we doing? Well, let's see. We're not doing a lot more industry right now. It's only 67, so... we I like resources, maybe? Electronics, though? Honestly, electronics, there's not nearly much that we can do in electronics. Yeah, we get radar, which I'll probably do eventually, but... Uh, just for research speed, I really don't touch it that much, so... Alright, artillery is done. Let's get some better artillery, then. Beautiful. We don't want to use outdated World War II artillery, do we? That's so old. Uh, we could save the PP for this. Uh, do we need guns, artillery, trucks? I think I did buy some artillery, though, off-screen. Yeah. We're going to need more artillery. Going to need more planes. We're making some convoys as well. So, trucks, not really needed. Artillery, uh, infantry equipment, maybe. We're already pretty high, so let's just go with industry for the future. Because we will get to 1970, and we'll need some bonuses to quickly research some other, some other stuff. Uh, we'll begin to rapidly improve. I like that. Factories may be an important part of any modern economy, but without the proper tools and equipment, they operate at a pace that would be kindly described as suboptimal. Due to the nature of the situation, uh, the manufacturing of new tools is not exactly something that is within our means. Luckily, our bonds with the Japanese and the Zaibatsu have only grown stronger over time, and we, we can use this to our advantage. Japan's, Japan's industry is one of the most modern in the world, and it goes without saying that the cutting-edge industrial equipment plays a large role. Let us work out a deal. Surely an, an economic powerhouse like Japan has plenty to go around, and will be willing to share with their new friends in Russia, right? Right? Six point four percent isn't too bad. I got a cup of coffee here, but one-sided relationship. This is the Imperial Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nikolai Uktomsky Uk speaking. I'm afraid I have some news that you're not going to like. The familiar voice made the foreign minister go cold. My partners are receptive to your offer of an economic partnership. However, they demand certain concessions. Concessions? What? We've given you quite enough already. I suggest you alter your tone, Uttomsky. My partners want to ensure that Zaibatsu can conduct their business as they see fit within your borders. I trust this is not too much to ask. Yes. 
We would be more than happy to accept their business, but you know that Zabatu will have us by the balls in no time if we give them the chance. Forgive me, Utkomsky, but I don't believe you are in a position to bargain. You either accept the benefits of our business has to offer or don't. For the record, I would argue that this conversation would not be necessary if, I, if we were dealing with your predecessors instead. A pause. The man on the phone was right, and Uk Tomsky knew it. Got it. Gosh darn it, fine. You have your concessions, just no more surprises, alright? I knew you would see it our way, I will be in touch. And with that, the line went up, and Uk Tomsky slammed the phone back into place. The deal gets worse by the minute. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Efficiency is key. Well, it's cool enough, but the modern Zemstava. Or Zemstva. Zemstva. The Far East has long been a vast and unruly region, and even with our limited size, governing this massive stretch of territory is proving to be a challenge indeed. If we continue to use the same system of governance once utilized during the struggle against the Reds and Fascists, our economy will surely begin to face drastic consequences of our inaction. Mikhail Ivan Mikhailov, Minister of Finance, will propose a solution that comes straight from the long and celebrated history of our empire. The thousands of towns and villages of our, of our state shall have their voices heard and their labor concerns considered via a system of local councils modeled after the imperial Zemstvo system. Mikhailov believes that these modern Zemsta Zemstva will take a considerable amount of strain off our administration and better organize the peasants and workers of good old Russia. Cut, 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 cut. More technology, because we got to save as many men as possible. Resources are coming along. Better guns. Have I not? Why have I not done that one yet? What is wrong with me? And what happened to the societal development? Do we only get one level each one now or something? What happened here? I want to improve society, please. Birth of an industry, but still. Redirect the workforce. Uh, let's do re redirect the workforce. Despite all the drumlings about things like human rights, <laughs> our prisoner scheme proved to be an overwhelming success, unfortunately, though. Now that their duties are mostly completed, we shall once again have a large pool of prisoners with nothing to do but sit in their cells and wait their freedom. Perhaps another use could be found for them. Our nation needs more factories, and our civilian uh, workforce is once again proving to be less inadequate. The time has come to wrangle the prisoners once more and redirect them towards the goal of construction and production, rather than reclamation. These criminals and traitors shall continue to repay their debts through service to the Empire. Now we're going to keep boosting up the budget, because even though I think we're doing pretty darn well here, we still don't have enough. I mean, frankly, we just don't have enough industry here. We've got to keep building, 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 building. Good. Okay, here we go. I wonder where it went. It just completely disappeared. Regional development. Oh, you paid me when you just leave. Why do you leave? Do both. Thank you. Electronics. We want to save more political power for more uh, societal improvements, shall we? And the next research will be done in a little more than a month. So, the East awakens. Yes, please. Imperial Co-op Corporations. Part of the reason Japan's economy is such a powerful force of nature is Zaibatsu. These financial conglomerates control much of their economy and are the key driving force behind the sphere's financial interests. To build a functioning, powerful economy of our own. Perhaps we should look to the Zaibatsu for inspiration and foster the creation of our own business giants. Sponsored by the Crown, we shall establish a series of imperial cor corporations. These corporations will serve a similar role to the Japanese Zaibatsu and will hopefully grow to be a formidable economic force in their own right. To better ensure the corporations have opportunity to grow, they will be given us a great deal of privileges and be allowed to operate as they see fit so long as their interests do not conflict with those of the Empire. If all goes to plan, the imperial corporations shall be the greatest arsenal and our, uh, weapon in our economic arsenal. A different kind of prison. Place with artillery shell on the assembly line. <clears throat> his hundredth of the day. Andre sighed and looked around to see if a warrior was watching, stretching his aching back. A former fighter for Makovsky's faction of the RFP, Andre had been captured during the fall of Magadan. After a short time spent in a Tsar's prison camp, wondering as this to as to his ultimate fate, he had certainly been issued simple tools and sent to an iron mine near Cheetah. Long hours spent underground and had driven him almost to the point of insanity. <clears throat> and nearly destroyed him physically besides. Just as suddenly, however, he had been ordered into a truck, and for, within short order had been found himself in a munitions factory. Assembling and polishing artillery shells was hard work, but it was nothing compared to mining, even if there were many more guards watching him now. He supposed he couldn't blame him. Placing former enemies in proximity to the high explosives would have got, given him pause as well, but they had nothing to worry about, at least not from those smart enough to properly understand the situation. Even if escape was possible or sabotage was possible, there was nowhere to go. And Mikoski was gone. As, as stressful as work in the factory was, it was a far sight better than that of the mine. The food and barracks were better as well, so Andre would work and work hard. One day he knew that Tsarats would have to let him go. Until then, however, he would work. Finishing his stretch, he returned his attention to the production line. I had hundreds more shells to finish before the day's end. A man did a workforce. Very nice. Six point nine percent. We only got point two percent better GDP growth, but hey, that's okay. New industrial center, shall we? To more efficiently manage the construction of new factories, the Ministry of Finance has proposed establishing a series of industrial zones solely dedicated to housing or industry. <clears throat> 
Such a system has worked well in the past, and famously was responsible for the transforming the western portions of Siberia into Russia's back industrial backbone. Although the conditions are not nearly as favorable in the Far East, that is not to say we cannot establish specialized zones to nurture the region's burgeoning industry. As we create these zones, we will look to our urban centers as well as spaces of nature that have been reclaimed. With a little hard work, this, can, this once overlooked stretch of wasteland can become a highly productive region capable of standing proudly amongst the, of Ru the rest of Russia's industrial hotlands. Very good. Still nothing here. C'est la vie. Alright. Do you want some more resource efficiency gain? Hmm. Also, it's not looking good. It really is not looking good. Wow. We're, we're still pretty much a backwater. That's all right. Efficiency is key, probably. Our factories still aren't working fast enough. Despite all of our efforts, they're still running into frustrating bottlenecks which hamper their efficiency and cripple productivity. Upon closer inspection, a large part of lo this lies in the way that the factories op themselves operate. They still operate by rules and methods from several decades ago. This will not do. And the solution may once again lie in the hands of the rising sun. Japan's economy is renowned for its brutal efficiency, and we should do well and tr try and copy their methods of production however we can. We will invite Japanese experts to streamline our production lines and ensure that our workers are doing their jobs as efficiently as possible. Oh, and then can we hope to match the industrial output of our rivals? Hopefully, yes, please. Ooh, just in time for that. Nice. More equipment. We lose three civilian factories, and we get faster military construction speed, but I'm not too worried about military construction speed right now. Equipment. Even more expertise. And a bonus. Another bonus for our industry. Nice. Jolly good. Finally, better guns. Finally. It took us... I told 1967 to get better guns. My goodness. My, my goodness. The East Awakens. It took a great deal of toil, but the numbers speak for themselves. Their economy is showing signs of proper activity for, for the first time in years. It has almost become completely self-sustaining. Factors across the region once deemed as an inhospitable frozen hexscape are hard at work. The factors, the workers, laboring tirelessly to ensure the prosperity of the empire. Thanks to our modernization efforts, their productivity has risen to never-before-seen levels. We almost get two political power a day. Against all odds, the Russian Far East has finally risen from its cold, deep slumber. Rejuvenated beyond our wildest dreams with newfound wealth and prosperity, the white movement has never been in a stronger position. Aw, oh, yeah. And we could really use some manpower, not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, last time we saw that, we had the second South African War, but they're all killing each other, so that's kind of nice. Efficiency is key, my friends. Absolutely key. The East Awakens. And we're pushing through this pretty quickly. Nice. 800 billion, not bad. Uh, anything else? You no? Know? Okay. Electronics. <clears throat> How much more artillery do we need? Oh, uh, we could still use it. Just maybe a spot more. Because I would like to get 40 combo with infantry division, so. Uh, it's a good idea to see how strong Rurik currently is, though. Uh, he's got plenty of manpower compared to us. And he doesn't have that many more divisions. 19, we have 21. So, the faster we can go to war with them, the better. Lessons of War. Their new favorite. Uh, research facilities. Let's do it. And Magre is abroad. With the conquest of the Far East, we have once again put ourselves as a real, if not obscure, blip on the international map. One of the unexpected but certainly welcome side effects of this has been the revitalization of the waning white, waning white emigre movement, the survivals of the Civil War, or the children. These emigres exist worldwide with significant populations in Europe, Harbin, and the Americas. When the diplomatic situation stabilizes a little bit, it's time to appeal to these emigres. We will ask for donations from those interested in able, as well as promising uh, repatriation to all emigres who come to the Far East and serve our government in the reconquest of all of Russia. We expect the first wave of the most dedicated and ideological emigres to come shortly. Nice. Get some more civilian factories, get some more uh, infrastructure. What's not to love? Boost. Ah, minus two billion, nice. Mm. Poverty relief, really good. Good, 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 good. Slightly increased GDP, huh? I'm not really gonna notice it though. The East Awakens, very nice. <clears throat> Next technology will be, will be done in three weeks. Back to Manchuria. When our brave soldiers departed from Harbin, we were a mixed group of fascist cons conscripts and Tsarist ideologues. Unfortunately, a great many of the whites in Harbin, reluctant and cynical about our attempts at reconquest, stayed behind. Over the years, these immigrants, or most prominent of them, became quite close with the Manchurian reform bureaucrats, involving themselves with Manchuko's large and healthy industrial sector. Now that we've established ourselves in the Far East and proven to these once cynical immigrants that we're here to stay, only most traders would think to not join us and bring with all with them all of the industrial expertise they've cultivated over the years. Nice. Hey, education. Mm. Got a cup of coffee or two? I love it. All in a day's work, my friend. 
It was early dawn when a grizzled old figure stepped onto its front porch with a glass of vodka in hand. Corel leaned to his chair, savoring the crisp morning air. Only a few years ago, he would be setting out into the wilderness to hunt or forge, but now there was hardly anything left of the forest he once knew so well. The older hunter turned his eyes down, gazing at the vast industrial park which had been replaced the wilderness. He played a part in that, drinking his soul for money, helping destroy the force which had provided for his family for generations. Oh, the IDC had paid him handsomely for his services, and the money helped him keep his home and allowed him to provide his children the education to ensure that they do well in the new Siberia. His children were somewhere down there, vast in the, in the vast expanse of concrete and steel. Siberia may be obtained, and the wilderness replaced with civilization, but civilization was no place for men like him. His children would never be able to live the life he had, probably for the better, but where others saw progress, all he saw was the cost of the wilderness, the forests, and the rivers. His glass was empty now, alcohol dulling his mind, filling it or filled it as it was, filled as it was with regrets and increasingly distant memories. Stumbling onto his feet, the old hunter went back inside. One last untamed beast in a civilized land. The cost of progress. It is definitely cost. There's always a cost to everything, pretty much. Another gun. Good. Very good, my friends. 0.82 billion in terms of debts. Not bad. I don't like that 12% annual debt, but it makes sense. It, it makes sense. Uh, we have this because industrial bonus. Yes. I'm going to keep going to get that industrial bonus. That might be a good thing to do. Ah, France, such as Italy, I see. Huh? Cool. Military austerity. Nope. Back to Manchuria. Uh, across the ocean might not be bad. That. What does this do for us? Academic base? Why not? Great numbers in, in, of emigrants, instead of fleeing to Harbin, it went to Europe or the Americas. Well, the Nazis have imposed a certain terror over the most of the lands that they conquered and secured, emigrants can still come from Europe, and those who are the most willing to come from the Americas shall do so. <clears throat> Further promises of repatriation and involvement in the government through privileged positions have indeed already enticed many, and will surely do for, more for emigrants attracted by the prospect of a new, true restoration of the empire. With these new emigrants, especially from the U.S. and England, bring with them their academic backgrounds and highly educated children. The steady stream of men and women from the more learned parts of the world will serve to increase our ability to educate the next generation and help to create a real educational base, or educated base, for Russia. Which is a very good thing for us. Scientific research. We, be we believe and love in scientific research. Not bad. Um, I'll go do that too, because we almost get two a day. Almost get two a day, so that's not really not too bad to grab. Cut. <clears throat> the new favorite. When our old alliance with the fascists split soon after the slowing of our offensive in the 50s during the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Japanese soon made Konstantin Rodzewski the golden boy, so to speak, showering him and his black shirts with Japanese material, training, and basically anything else that they could dream of. In exchange, of course, the implied Japanese influence in the nation that he would theoretically unify. Now that we have triumphed, or trumped the Russian fascist party and reestablished the true heir of Harbin as a white movement, the Japanese will once more approach us in the hope that they could salvage the relationship that they once held with their boss. While it's true that we have previously accepted Japanese help, now that the Japanese are coming for us, rather than the other way around, we may have a new, more privileged negotiating position. Regardless, we become Japan's new favorite in the Far East. Good. Very good. Keep expanding. I don't like this anti-air support, but we gotta get it anyway, so... <clears throat> yeah, I'll probably need to build some military factors, but then again... Oh, look! 6.7%. It was 6.9, now it's 7.7. 7.6. My words. Pronunciations. My apologies. Always difficult. Ooh. New favorite, though. We're really improving our society here by a whole lot, and I love it. One of my favorite things. That'll be done within three weeks-ish. Asian diplomatic exchanges. After having no shortage of painful runnings around with the Japanese delegation in Tokyo, they've they have agreed to convince the other members of the sphere to engage in diplomatic exchanges with us. Their embassies will be established in Cheetah, while their embassies will be established in their respective capitals. This is not how, how all, however. All, part of these diplomatic exchanges we have secured for ourselves include Russian academic and scientific teams visiting places like China, Japan, and Indonesia to examine the vast industrial and economic technologies that the Code Prosperity Sphere has implemented in the years since their victory over the U.S. These examinations by our scholars and intellectuals will mean that they will return to our territory ready for the implementation and application of these technologies and principles throughout our land. If you'd like to read about the heirs of Babylon, please go right ahead. But this happens every campaign. It's actually now 1968. Wow. But heirs of Babylon happens ev literally every single campaign, when, especially when we play Russia. So uh, this one, more infrastructure, oil, chromium. Screw it. Why not? Oh, so that's why the debt keeps going up. It's because we keep spending money for solid developments. That's why. Duh. Mr. Mocha lover. Come on, man. You gotta realize that. I can't, I can't believe I didn't realize it yet. I can't, oh, my goodness. Why is the debt going up? It's because you keep doing societal development. Duh. <laughs> oh, we can afford this. It's only 35 political power. 
When we remove it, gets maybe some slightly more stability, more GDP. Not bad. Nice. Remember the, remembering the Zaibatsus. Despite our reluctance to do so, the Japanese have insisted that as a prerequisite for the cooperation and recognition that we are to grant a large number of concessions to their economic mega corporations, the Zaibatsus have long looked towards our resource rich lands with greedy eyes. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're not in any position to flatly reject the proposition. However, this does not mean that we have re resigned to the Japanese dominating our nascent economy. No, we've already begun to plan how to circumvent this unique economic situation that our new benefactors have imposed upon us. However, in the meantime, it's time to publicly acknowledge the benefit that the Zaibatsus have brought us and prepare for the landfall in the Far East. Good. Keep spending money, though. Hey, it's, oh, there it goes, a thousand manpower. Um, do this first. Infrastructure's cool and all, but civvies. Alright, so that's as much civvies as we can build here, apparently. Uh, we don't own this island. That is Japanese island. Cool. <clears throat> oh, nice. Very nice. Anything else here? Nope. I remember the Zebatsus, and time for more coffee. Also, uh, we're trying to get make some 40 combo with tanks, I think, so. Yep, some pretty thick tanks and some 40 combo with divisions, too. But obviously, we don't have enough for manpower. Oh, there goes him. Re Revitalize national service programs. We lose a little bit more stability to get more weekly manpower, which isn't very much. It's about, so that's about 7 times 7, so it's 7, 8. 8 times 7, 50. Eh, that's an okay amount of manpower. It's not great. About 5,600, if I do my math right. 5,600? Well, yeah. About so. But consumer goods, it's just so good, so. <clears throat> That's alright. Now we've got enough political power to hold on for the, for the future. Looking for recognition? Well, why not? Now that we've stabilized the Japanese demand and begun to attract an influx of emigres who will help in the development of our nation, we can finally think about actually lobbying for official recognition. Controlling but a quarter of Russia's territory and only a fraction of her population, this will certainly be an uphill battle, but with the Japanese backing a claim to Russian legitimacy, and the hardest steps have already been taken. An official statement of intent for the reclamation of Russia and the re-establishment of the imperial Tsar system shall be made. But assurances towards Washington in regards to constitutionalism and our eventual distancing from the Japanese will hopefully placate their fears. Ultimately, our goal is to have both the Americans and the Japanese view us as a rightful Russian heir. And that would be a good, good thing. Keep extracting more resources if we can. We should be doing pretty darn well on resources, at least on the aluminum, which is a bad re Extracting 22. We could use some rubber, but that's going to come eventually. Trucks, ooh, yes, 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 please. Lose some daily political power gain. Get more army XP, which I'm not really too concerned about. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. Look at all this development. I love it. We've done really well. 6.5 a month, 7 a month, 2.75, which is okay, not great. The party rate is slowly getting better, or getting out of the gutter of negative numbers. Industrial equipment is going up by 9 a month, 5.75. Army professionalism is slowly going up as well. Looking for recognition, my friends. Followed up with off to Tokyo. Off to Tokyo first, since they helped us the most. Well, it may seem like a no-brainer at the point for the Japanese to recognize us as a rightful claimant to Russian unification. Their administration has clearly been fickle in the past and are certainly not perfect. A stark reminder this was the support of the RFP instead of our movement. Thus, the administration in Chita has prepared to send an official delegation to Tokyo in order to request the Japanese officially recognize the white movement based in Chita as a rightful heir of Russia. They're setting off by plan from the city of Chita. Well, was seen as a new era by many within Cheetah's administration. A new era of success and, of course, prosperity. Hmm. Ah, screw it, why not? Hopefully we can go above 81% stability, but we'll see what happens. The dam has been done. Looking for recognition. Very good. Out to Tokyo, my friends. And the next one will be done in quite a while. Cut down that debt. Wow, we're doing really much better now. Well, less than 340 million with an M? Oh, Salazar is dead. They go to war. Hope beyond Japan, though. The Japanese are a safe bet in terms of international recognition, but they are no means by the only power with recognition that we seek. Apart from Tokyo and her spearlings, Americans across the Pacific, and the economically powerful OFM, has been a ten has been long been a target of some of the more open-minded and innovative individuals within our ruling circles. <clears throat> Given our close work with the Japanese for the moment and are quashing the American favorite from Magadan, it was most, only, most almost certainly be a quest that will end in disappointment. However, it's so important that we try and at the very least establish a precedent for a future relationship with Washington and our allies. You never know. Hey, 100 more manpower, not bad. Construction? Keep keep going. Go, 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 go. For what we lack in manpower, we'll, we'll make up for it in industry. Hopefully. 
Mostly 8, 8.1%, not bad. The first of many. Deep within the Kasumigaski district of Tokyo, General Vladimir Abramov felt like a stranger in an even stranger land. Here he was, standing inside a nondescript office in the Japanese Foreign Ministry's headquarters, facing an official diplomatic delegation. Vladimir was handpicked by Boris Shipanov personally to lead the white delegation to Tokyo. Although the general never dared to question his superior's orders, there was one small hang-up that he had with the, had with the idea. Abramov was a military man and had no diplomatic experience whatsoever. He wondered why Shipanov didn't just get the foreign ministry to handle it instead, but it was too late to do anything about it now. The Japanese were before him and expecting Abramov to be the face of the new Russian diplomatic mission. He knew the future of Russo-Japanese relations may hinge on the success or failure of this meeting. In short, His Imperial Majesty wishes to look past any historical transgressions and promote a great renewal in Russo-Japanese relations. Rest assured, we've approached as friends and equals. Uh, we approach each other. Abramov's statement sounded painfully rehearsed, and he hoped that the fact was lost on the Japanese. His Japanese counterparts turned to speak to one of his subordinates in a language the Russian delegation did not understand. The diplomat then turned back to Abramov with an unconvincing smile on his face. Equals, you say? What an interesting perspective to say, the least. Do not worry, General. Japan is indeed open to strengthening relations. I sincerely hope that today's meeting shall be the first of many. Perhaps we've also learned a thing or two about the conducting diplomacy in the process, yes? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed, yes. Increased Japanese support. Well, it's currently high, so... I'll get a bonus for industries. Like, I'm preparing for ourselves. Once we take out Rurik, hopefully, and hopefully do okay, because we're out of manpower. Actually, once we, like, go to war, I will increase military spending by even more, by drastically more, so we can get some extra manpower growth that way. So, we're just preparing ourselves for the future. But lessons of war, shall we? The White Armies triumph over the many foes in the Far East, and the venomous fascists to our ultimate Bolshevik foes. Despite a well-earned victory, however, it is clear that the armed forces have a long way to go before they can be considered a competent modern force. For now, though, we can start with what strategies and tactics would suit our needs best. The wars to redefine the region have taught us much about our strengths and weaknesses, and it would be prudent to examine what we've learned before continuing our quest to, re to reunify the country. Liberal victory in Canada? Liberalism? The philosophy of our time? Maybe. I don't know. An unusual request. Uh, you said he was a Russian? Are you sure? I'm positive. His English was so broken we couldn't understand him. We had to find someone in the building who spoke Russian to find out what he wanted. Send him in. Although the ambassador was confused, his curiosity was piqued. It had been some time since the ambassador brushed up on his Russian, but he was confident that he knew enough to conduct diplomacy. After a few quiet moments, a mysterious emissary entered the ambassador's office. Sal salutations! I represent His Imperial Majesty Mikhail II, Emperor of all of Russia. I come to you today to request official diplomatic recognition from the U.S. as a true government of Russia. The ambassador was completely overwhelmed by what he had just heard. Hey, slow down there, pal. You just said you represent an emperor? Indeed. On behalf of our divinely chosen Emperor Mikhail II, the White Army has wrestled or wrested eastern Siberia away from the fascists and Bolshevik tyrants. Now that our position is secure, we wish to obtain recognition as a legitimate government as we are. The only answer, this only answer, this, blah, 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 this answer only raised more questions. The ambassador was going to have to call someone about this, but first he had to get the strange Russian out of his office. Well, I'm afraid there's not much I can do, seeing as my job is to handle relations with Japan, but I can make some calls to the State Department on your behalf. Uh, you have any other questions? No, that would be all. Ah, uh, please. Now, I, I play as America, and when we do this, I think we get they get the option using the CIA to like give us stuff or help us out or something, if they choose to do so. Which means we're at their mercy if they want to help us out. So, it is what it is, but whatever. Oh, look at that. We built up all the stuff. Um, Yeah, keep building up uh, infrastructure. That'd be nice. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of building slots here, but what, what do you expect? Reignite the movement. Let's lose the manpower now since we have no manpower. Examine the troops, shall we? When you find yourself cornered on all sides by hostile forces in a depopulated frozen wasteland, you'll find that you can't be too picky when finding men to serve on the front. The situation got desperate, and the White Army was forced to make compromises that would have been avoided in better days. As a result, many of our troops could hardly be considered motivated professional soldiers. With peace restored to the region, we needed to closely examine our troops and separate the wheat from the chaff. Nice. I'm ready to keep getting... Oh, look, no debt. Hold on. We're going to have debt once we do... Nope, okay, we're going to deal with that stuff, okay. Nice. A generational divide. No, 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 no. If we do that... We would leave our flanks exposed and open, a perfect opportunity for the enemy to encircle and destroy our forces in detail. The man speaking was old. That much was obvious, the graying hair and callous skin leaving nothing more to chance. But his eyes were still sharp, and a piercing stare that had carried him from the Siberian ice march to the reconquest of the Far East. A chest of campaign ribbons leaving no doubt to his record. And if we do what you have drawn up, we'd be stuck on the side of the river trying to find a way past our lines for most of the next week. With all due respect, we cannot squander the initiative. Risks will have to be taken, sir. A younger man lacking the signs of old age or the decorations, but his eyes still had the same piercing stare, enthusiasm at least partially. Tempered by the fires of war, but possessing a youthful spirit the older man lacked. The veteran was almost tempted to rebuke him, to remind the younger man of his seniority or service he... 
<sighs> he sighed. That wouldn't do. He was not long for this world. He knew that he would never see the Tsars restored to Petrograd or find whatever became of his family home out east. No, that would be a test for a younger man than he. It was his job to prepare them for the burdens that lay ahead. And part of that included dealing with their insolence. The officer had a point, though. Risks need to be taken. Hmm, maybe he had grown too cautious with age. He was already adjusting the plans in his head when he spoke. Your point is well stated, Colonel. Adjustments will be made. You will take care... Or you'll take our two of our best units and attempt to seize the crossing in a coup de main. The rest of us will. The guard is, of course, changing, as it should, but, you know, maybe not too fast. Yeah, military is pretty good. We're not mobilizing. Yeah, I guess we are, but we already took up the manpower from it, so just keep cutting it down for now. It is 68. And what year do we have to be at to go to war with them? Um, 69. So, in, like, a few months. Encourage agricultural mechanization. Good. Good, 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 good. I got a little bit more depth. That's all right. Reignite the movement. With the reunification of the Russian Far East and the total defeat of both the fascists and the Bolsheviks, the white movement has never been stronger. Sadly, the white officers who started this fight to reclaim Russia are getting on in their years and cannot hope to continue the fight forever, despite the general staff's hesitation. There's only one answer to the problem. The white army needs new blood. Although the old whites have been skeptical of allowing new officers into the ranks due to fears of liberal and even social sympathies infiltrating the higher echelons, the fact is that we cannot avoid the inevitable. Uh... We need new officers at some point, and the white movement will die out with the old generations otherwise. The time has come to ignite the flames of Russian monarchism and anti-Bolshevism within the next generations of Russians, for it is they who will become the general staff of tomorrow. Nice. Oh, we had some technology done. Well, my bad. Keep going for guns, and get some more land out of attack. That'd be good. And we have anti-air now... Oh, are we, are we still researching it? Oh, we're still researching it. Oh, that takes a long time. Holy crap. That takes a really long time. Wow. Reignite the move, movement, my friends. And then, tighten the standards. Army professional begins to go up. Uh, it goes up for both, so... Basic training, huh? Tighten the standards. The only reason less than adequate men were able to fill the ranks was due to the fact that a recruitment standard was not very high to begin with. Before the unification of the Far East, having a full-strength army was a luxury, and even we were willing to accept anyone who was able to hold a gun. Times have changed, and we cannot continue to accept anything less than the very best for the White Army. Chief of Staff Ball shipping up demands a strict tightening of the Empire's recruitment standards to ensure that they are capable, disciplined, fighting men who make the cut. Our new White Army will demand a certain level of quality within the ranks, and not even... Not every random vagabond who shows up at the recruitment office will be worthy of the uniform. Good. Airport heavy machinery? You bet we are going to do that. Tighten the standards, my friends. Even though Boris Shepanov is no longer here. But, hey, whatever. Nice. Imperial War Acad Ac 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 Academies? Academies, yes. Sign of the time. Sophia had ventured out from her apartment far more than usual. Ever since the fascist government had been driven out of Zaya, she felt quite comfortable walking the streets again, knowing that the thugs of the RFP no longer terrorize the city. That is not to say, however, that things were getting any less strange. As she made her way home for the day, Sophia noticed a small group of people gathered around the sidewalk in front of, the, of her. Their attention appeared to be focused on something attached to the side of the building. Whatever it was, it had caused quite a stir. As she drew closer, she could hear the people mumbling amongst themselves. Finally, she was able to see what exactly they were looking at. Attached to the wall was a large propaganda poster, clearly meant to advertise service in the White Army. Fronting the center was an idealized depiction of a fierce-looking soldier charging a two-headed dragon with his rifle in hand. The dragon was clearly an evil creature, with one head colored red and the other one a deep black. Wrapped in the beast's tail was a pole bearing the tattooed tricolor Russia. Captioned in the bold letters were the words, Join the White Army and deliver Holy Russia from the clutches of radicalism. The symbolism was not lost on anyone. Sophia could not help feel twinges of concern. While this poster was fairly benign, similarly, militaristic designs would not look entirely out of place in the previous regime. Continuing her journey home, she could only hope that a relatively peaceful existence would come or continue, even as the new regime tightened the grip. A fresh corner of fate. The White Army needs new officers. This dire requirement is a prevalent in every aspect of the armed forces, from the rapidly aging general staff to the outdated nature of our strategies. New blood will not only provide worthy successors to the old wives, but also potentially to provide us with new bold military theories better suited for the modern battlefield. Sadly, we currently lack the facilities for training new officers. The general staff has proposed establishing Imperial War Academies for this purpose. The Far East is home to a few war colleges from the Soviet era and a few older that have gone without use for many decades now, and they could serve our purposes quite handily. These old schools of military learning shall be re renovated and become the molds in which the next generation of white officers are shaped. Nice. We actually made another division. Look at that. Look at that. And it is two more. Nice. Getting out of extra manpower does definitely help out, and they're 40 combo divisions, so that will actually pack. Well, quite a punch, so. Go, make sure they go all to their respective places. 
Yep, and put more machinery. Man, we are really setting ourselves up for the future. Holy crap. Look at all this political power we have. That's really, just really good. Improve the methods. As was proven in the past year, war is a rigorous affair, and only the hardiest of men will be capable of facing the hordes that lie within. Preparing these young men for battle through rigorous training is an important step towards hardening both their body and mind for the coming struggles. Sadly, our current regiments are mostly designed with the goal of getting as many recruits through the system and into the fray as quickly as possible. Therefore, the priorities of our approach to the training routines have to to make a drastic change. Instead of focusing on the bare minimum to increase the quanti quantity of new troops, the new drills will focus on building discipline and proficiency. The White Army's recruits will get to the terms with their rigors of warfare on the next on the training grounds, rather than on the battlefield. Not only will this create a much more disciplined body of soldiers, but also help build a more professional army. Basic training. Lose attack and defense. That's not good if things go down. Uh, more equipment. I don't care. Just keep going. Go, 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 go. We got the political power for it. We got the, we got the money for it too, so... Uh, basic training military. Where is that? To women, military assistance. No supervision. Where is basic training? Oh, here it is. Minimal training. Oh, we go up to here. Okay, so it looks like, even though it says that, oh, a monthly army professionalism goes down with minimal training. Going up to here actually gives us 5% more attack, uh, defense, uh, organization, personal modifier cost. Oh, that's, that just costs, costs us slightly more money. Slightly worse tra training times. Slightly worse mobilization speed, but honestly, that's not too bad. I, I, I'll gladly take that over everything else, so. Um, screw it. We're going to need a lot more artillery for where we're headed, so. Next generation. Brave sons of Russia, our once proud empire lies broken and desecrated. Warlords and pretended governments pick apart the bones of the illegitimate Soviet government and seek to establish their own cruel dominion over the country. Fear not, brothers, for there is hope. The rightful heir of the Romanov throne is returned at the head of the most loyal army, and with their help he has secured peace and order in the Russian Far East. Your emperor's struggle is not yet over, however, he needs your help. The White Army is in need of recruits to continue the fight to restore Russia's honor, and only when the, with the aid of the bravest fighting men can they continue the march to victory. Join the White Army today and secure your eternal place as a hero in Russia's glorious history. God is with us, and we get 15,000 mole manpower. Not as much as I'd like, but hey, we'll take it. Nice. Beautiful, my friends. With next technology will be done in quite a few months. Holy crap. Yeah, army stuff takes a while to do, but the new White Army. The White Army of today is now a very different force from the ones that crossed the Amur into the Russian Far East so long ago. What was once a ragged force of old Cossacks and bandits in uniform has been transformed into a highly disciplined professional army proudly serving the name of the Tsar. Thanks to our efforts in recruiting a fresh body of young officers, we've ensured that the troops will be well led even long after the old whites are gone. The White Army has attained a level of professionalism it has never seen before, and all that remains now is to begin a broader program of modernization to ensure the proud troops of the Empire are ready for whatever threat awaits out to the West. More attack, defense, and organization for division? Sign us up, my friends. We love our education. We love poverty rates going up. Well, maybe not going up, but improving. Getting, removing poverty as best possible. Oh, uh, ship stuff. I like the plane stuff. That's good. Bonus. It really doesn't matter too much. I like this one, too. Widespread cronyism changes with the political interference. We lose political power, but we get more, just better stuff overall. So, take the skies, my friends. It's an absolute disgrace that a glorious white army still does not have a proper air force to support them. During our campaigns across the Far East, we've captured many planes that once belonged to the enemy, and now they set gathering dust in their hangars, awaiting the day that they will see service once again. Although we still lack the industrial capacity to mass produce planes of our own, we're using the spoils of war that will serve as an adequate beginning for a new imperial Russian Air Force. In this time, the Majesty will have a formidable fleet of aircraft at his command, and the sky shall be secured in the name of the Empire. <laughs> Safety regulations? Nah. Death of a stranger. Oh no, Mikhail had the newspaper in his hand. It was in French, luckily heavily censored by the German puppet masters. The front page was plastered with some political scandal that Mikhail cared very little for. He had no clue as to who the primary players in the scandal were, and was certain that his isolation in Cheetah meant that the happenings in France would go have no impact on him whatsoever. The front page, of course, was not why the aide had given him the paper. Several sheets deep, Mikhail found what he was looking for, a footnote really unworthy of its own article, simply an obituary entry. Fyodor Alexandrovich, born the 22nd of December, 1898, died 30th of November, 1968. There was more, of course, a short paragraph dedicated to the greatness of his life and those he left behind. So that was why the paper had been delivered. Uncle Fyodor was dead! Mikhail stared at the entry, feeling a distant ache that was as forced and invented as it was real. He tried again, saying to himself again and again, Uncle Fyodor is dead. God, he had to admit it to himself. He didn't really care. It was this realization that hurt him more than the actual death. Why was he so distant? So removed from the rest of his family that death meant so little to him. It wasn't as if they had been so close, true, but shouldn't he care more about a death than the family? Mikhail pondered this, wondering if... When his own death came, it would be greeted with the same enthusiasm he had mustered. The Tsar looked out the window at the moon dappled falling snow, the pale light falling across his face. Today, here today, gone tomorrow. 
big sadness. But with that in mind, like, if that happens, like, maybe she'd realize, maybe, you know, his wife is back home in you know, Australia, but maybe she'd get married again and actually have a big old family, have, you know, take care of a new family here in the East. Or maybe have agents send to Australia and take out or take his wife with him to be basically forced into Russia with him. So, and then really focus on family here as well. Maybe, you know, just a thought. But examine foreign designs one day. We'll be able to produce aircraft of our own. And when that day comes, we'll need cutting edge designs to ensure their dominance in the skies. For now, all we have to go on are vintage propeller driven aircraft produced during the Soviet era. Without design experts of our own, trying to reinvent the wheel will be too much of a hassle when so many promising designs from around the world already exist. Time to contact our friends in Tokyo once more again. Japan is an impressive force of modern aircraft at their disposal. Perhaps they would allow us to examine their designs so that we could potentially adapt them to suit our purposes in the future. Cold days. Oh, happy 1969, everyone. It seems like, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Rick wants to just go to war. Okay. All right. Prepare for war. Yep, they can have that too. All right. Well, we'll do land forts. Land forts. Oh, we're just going to do it all, so it doesn't really matter to me. And if you like to read about better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. But this helps us out a little bit more. Ooh, actually. Oh, that's, that's a little different. I remember seeing that one. Expertise. Nascent industrial base. We go with an experienced industrial base. Oh, no, no. This is, oh, this is equipment, not... Like, this is, Okay, so yeah, I thought this was better expert worker industrial expertise it was industrial equipment. So this is why we like it better because you get more resource efficiency in the game, which is okay, which is not bad. You get more construction speed, which is great, but you get more output for factories and dockyards, especially for factories. We love it. Factory complexes, nice, 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 nice. At this point, we might start increasing military spending. Grand showdown. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. It is what it is, but whatever. And we don't forget this. Nice. The land, last land doctrine shall be completed soon. Nav vision is important. Grab some more soft attack and defense. That'd be great. 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 Uh, infrastructure. Yes, please. Oh, we get... That's so much more manpower. 150,000. Holy crap. Oh, I'll do that too. Yeah. That's good. That's really, really good to do. And, and examine foreign designs as I try to finish up my coffee. Oh, my goodness. Next research will be done in a little bit more than two months. Weapons of the modern age. Currently, the White Army is mostly equipped with antiquated bolt-action rifles and various hand-me-down pieces of equipment secured from other sources, either from our defeated foes or the Japanese. Hello, Bennett. The rest of the world, however, has moved on. The assault rifles become the king of small arms, and wire-guided rockets have revolutionized the field of anti-tank weaponry. It is crucial that the White Army embraces these innovations. With the aid of foreign experts and some slightly unsavory dealers in the firearms trade, we shall equip our troops with the latest weaponry that the modern age has to offer. No longer shall we settle for the artifacts of the past. We could have a lot of bonuses, which I love, 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 love. Anything else here? Yes. I'll get those additional reserves. Uh, keep spending, cut. Because when we get to the next stage, oh, we're just going to probably build, 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 build. As you can see, we're doing right now. Examine foreign designs and weapons of the modern age. Actually, for now, um... I kind of like what we have here. We'll keep building this stuff up, but this is a priority. I want to build up these, this radar station, of course, as well first, but it's not going to help us that much. But having the planes here will be definitely help to us. Anything else around here? Not really. No, that sucks. Okay, whatever. And we have no manpower, so I can't even make any more planes, which sucks. But whatever. We already know that. The cavalry of the future. The White Army is a proud tradition of utilizing aggressive cavalry maneuvers dating all the way back to the days of the Russian Civil War. Even after Ataman Semyonov's tragic passing, the Transbaikal Cossack host still has a great deal of influence over military's tactical doctrines, and highly mobile cavalry units have remained an intrinsic characteristic of the White Army. Sadly, <coughs> excuse me. Sadly, the world has moved on from fighting on horseback. Fight as it we may, cavalry as we know is simply obsolete, but that is not to say the idea itself is without merit. Mobile units have evolved, and now armored vehicles such as tanks and the APC have fulfilled the role that the valiant raiders or riders of the old ones play. To keep in touch with the traditions of fighting on the move without shunning modern innovation, it would be wise to embrace the tried and tested me tactics of mechanized infantry blazing across enemy lines supported by heavy armor. The legacy of the White Cavalry shall live on in a new, more potent form. Planes and Hobbin. And this here is a KI-209 fighter bomber with a capacity of over 10,000. Shepanov slowly turned out of the, tuned out of the droning of their Japanese guide. Hobbin Airspace. <coughs> Airbase had long been a hub of aviation, but right now, Shippenov had neither the patience nor the technical knowledge to follow along. He'd get the cliff notes from his staff once they were back at Cheetah anyways. Taking in the view of the Songhua River, Shippenov took the opportunity to admire the land in which he had spent so many years. Hobbin had held many memories, few pleasant, but even he could still appreciate the land's natural beauty, what little of it not consumed under the smog of the city's industries. Turning his attention back to the tour, 
Shippenhut's eye was caught by a particular aircraft. Its backward-facing propeller and rear-mounted wings unlike anything else in the airbase. Excuse me, Colonel, but what aircraft is that? Shippenhut asked, interrupting the officer, his eyes so firmly locked on the offending plane. Recovering this, the guide caught Shippenhut's gaze and followed it to the culprit. This is a J-7W-3 Shindem, an old interceptor built in the last days of the Second World War. Up until it handles well, but it's over a decade out of date, sir, replied the liaison, annoyed at the interruption. The general barely heard him and was already dragging his entire entourage over to examine the aircraft in person. Well, that's weird, because shipping off is gone. Steel Riders. The frigid winds of the Far East cut through the thick coats of the assembled men of the 8th Siberian Cossack Division. The midnight sun casting an eerie light on the company. Yassal Urikov strode up towards his men, his dark eyes picking up from under his fur cap. The company commander seemed to be in a jubilant mood, an unusual spring animating his rapid steps. Boys, you're probably wondering why I dragged your booties out here in the cold so early in the morning. There's some, some grumbling and cursing among the Cossacks, signs quickly by Yassal's words. Well, shut the bad word up and you'll find out that's better. A metallic squealing and scraping brought... Brawl the eyes of all those gathering to the train tracks of the Cossack camp was established to protect. A train had pulled up outside the camp, a row of flat, flatbed cars stretching behind it. Heavy chops hit under the hit the hulking ships that squatted atop the beds. About time, shouted Urakov. <clears throat> Come on, lad. Let's unwrap your guests from the Tsar. The Cossacks hurried out to the train, and after some tugging and unclasping of buckles, all wore astonished grins. Your tank division now, boys, shouted the salt. Best cook up your horses and get used to the smell of grease. Trading hooves for treads. And we're going to do beginnings of a fleet. The Empire's position may appear strong for now, but without a fleet to support it, we may be, un may be open to unwelcome surprises from the sea. Although we lack the capabilities to create a fearsome navy worthy of Russia's military map, we can settle for reusing the navies of our defeated enemies for now. In the port of Magadan in particular, a small fleet that was formerly operated by the RFP currently sits in harbor gathering rust. These ships would be better suited to our purposes and can be retrofitted to become the first ships of the new and improved Imperial Russian Navy. I do want to let you guys know that... We uh, I already got the event off screen that uh, the Grand Principal to Central Russia, or Siberia, really. Uh, I decided to just go to war with us, anyways. So, well, they could go to war with us at any time. I'll put it like that. But, protecting our trade. Our business south of Japan are of vital importance to our cause, and the port of Magadan has become a critical lifeline of the outside world. Unfortunately, this fact may not be lost on our potential rivals. Currently, nothing is protecting trade routes. There you go. From pirates or other, or more clandestine dangers. Although our new fleet is quite small by the, st uh, by the standards of the rest of the world, its size means it's perfectly suited to escorting trade ships and ensuring that the money continues to flow through Magadan and into our hands. Although the Imperial Russian Navy is currently too small to go head-to-head -head with the potential rival fleet, it's perfectly capable of keeping the ocean safe and under control. All right, so now we're at war. Oh, we'll do this one again because we can't. More army professionalism, yes, please. Uh, are they attacking us at all? Uh, if not, I'd like to make a few encirclements, please. That'd be very nice. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to keep the infantry attacking these guys here. I want you two to attack here as well, so we can cut them off. Ah, wartime industry is done. We're done with the land doctrine, my friends. Thank goodness. Let's get some jet engines, shall we? We're st we don't. Wow, we don't even have jet engines. Holy cow. Good, we cut them off, my friends. Good, 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 good. Help them out. Uh, there you go. Have you guys hold. Have one of you guys come up here. Um, I don't see all the other divisions, so just go ahead, guys, if you can. Well, we lost 8, 10,000 versus 30,000, so that's not too bad so far. Beginnings of a fleet protecting our trade is very, very nice. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to be able to win everywhere. We need to really just concentrate on using our tanks and such. And go up there if you can. Better research facilities. Wow, I got two at the same time. Look at that. If you'd like to read about better research facilities, please go right ahead. It's a lot of better research times, less political power, whatever. Improved academic base. We get even better research speed. So, the better academic base gives us more research speed than actual research facilities. Okay. More factory output and production cap. Love it, my friends. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Actually, for now, spend... Cut. And invest. Not bad. I'd love to cut all these people off. Uh, are you still attacking up there? No, you're defending, actually. That's pretty nice. How are you guys doing up here? You guys should be able to win that one. Oh, you actually lost. Okay, so then hold. I don't know they actually lost. And we do have... We should have air superiority, right? Yeah, we do. Nice. We got plenty of planes. Oh, cool. Good luck, guys. Oh, we got some more research done. Love it. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Uh, even better soft attack and breakthrough, shall we? Oh, you guys hold for now then. Hold, 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 hold. Let the line come up through here. That'd be good. Come on.
Come on, you should be able to win. No, okay then. Go there. I'll send you guys here too. Come on, motorized, get your butts in there. Wow, you lost immediately? How? This guy's gotta be 40 combat with. Yeah, look at that, they're 40 combat with. No wonder we couldn't win there. Um, yeah, Rook. Holy bad words! How do you win with with not having air superiority at all? Holy crap. I mean, yeah, we don't have big, huge planes, but still. Oh, look at that. Free civilian. Oh, boy. Free civilian factors. Wow. Oh, uh, what do we want to else want to build? Okay, we got stuff here to build. Nice. Uh, maybe build some air rate stations there? We've lost so many. 30,000 versus 40,000. Uh, There's not many losses as, as I'd like to see. Beat them up if you can. That'd be kind of nice. Good. Beat them up. And they're probably going to be attacking across the entire straits here, but we'll see. Our military reforged. The White Army's modernization efforts are showing promising signs of progress. With new tactics and newer weapons at their disposal, our troops are easily capable of posing a serious threat to His Imperial Majesty's enemies. No longer are we the ragtag band of Cossack Raiders barely clinging into our strong stronghold in Cheetah. The White Army is finally forced to be taken seriously. On that, on top of that, the Imperial Russian Navy and the Imperial Russian Air Force have been reestablished. And with some time, they'll grow to be an indispensable addition to the Empire's armed forces. At last, the troops are ready to march west. Woe betide all who stand in their way, for the campaign of reclamation shall soon continue. Get more manpower, war, war support, lose some political power, and get more attack and defense, which will be very, very, very important for this type of campaign. Jesus Christ. Uh, there's nothing we can really do here. You're going to force defense. I don't care what happens. You will force defense with your lives, whether you like it or not. Wow, they're really taking a beating, though. Holy crap. Uh, maybe we want to help out here. There you go. Uh, Rook, you've got to have, like, no manpower after this. Come on, man. That, that's stupid. Rook is not easy to take out, so. If that's the case, retreat, retreat, retreat. You do not want to get encircled here. Retreat. I said retreat. Come on. Retreat. Do not get encircled here. Leave. Leave. Boost. We will not get encircled here. I swear to God, we will not get encircled. Leave. Trouble on the waters. Captain Maxim's stomach grumbled as he walked the bow of what we most argue barely passed for a ship. It had been days since then his, him and his motley crew had seen a ship on the river, and his crew was starting to get hungry. I told you we shouldn't have been so aggressive in our raiding. Pipe, one of his crew members, we scared off all the cargo ships for miles. How do we lose that much manpower? That's fake news. Perhaps we would be catching more ships if you just listened to me instead of con contradicting my orders. <clears throat> Barked an increasingly annoyed Maxim. He would have said more, but he was interrupted by the sight of a huge transport ship headed their way. Get into position, everyone. We've got a ship coming up. Maxim shouted. His vessel started speeding towards the ship, but his blood suddenly pumping. As his crew radiated their guns on the edge of the ship, when he thought tugged at the back of Maxim's head, ships did not usually sail towards the pirates. Before he could warn the crew to turn around, however, several bursts of heavy machine gun fire ripped through the ship and his crew. An explosion of pink mist and wooden, wooden splinters saw Maxim dive into the water below. In his final, final moments, Maxim looked up to see the words imprinted on the ship holding the heavy machine gun about to fire upon him. Gromo boy, Imperial Russian Navy. Yeah, holy crap. I mean, this guy cannot keep up with his manpower losses. Can he? I mean, that's a, this is ridiculous. I just didn't get circled. That's good. Oof. That is really, really good. Now, don't, don't worry about attacking Max. Yeah, Rook is, I would say overpowered, but we're just really weak. We're just incredibly weak. You should be able to win. Like, seriously, with all this air power that we got, I guess, no, we have no air power then. <clears throat> Let him, oh, no, no, you hold, you hold, 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 hold. Just defend as best you possibly can. Oh, look at that, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Holy crap. 40 combat with tanks are not enough to defend. Are you kidding me? You can beat him up. You're just not going over there, though. All right, let's take a look here. Anything else? Let's grab that. Let's grab that. Uh, invest in construction. Sure, why not? More stability and war support. Why not? How? There, that's that's absolutely fake news. We did not lose more casualties than our enemies. BS. That's complete 100% BS. Guys, hold your flipping positions. Jesus Christ. How? Screw it. Everyone's becoming 40 combo with. I don't care what happens. That is such BS. Overpowered divisions, man. Even with ground support. Like, it's still not enough. Uh, don't worry about attacking again. 
Hopefully, they're going to get a lot more resistance, hopefully. Oh, uh, I hate this part so much sometimes. Rurik, I know he's so strong. Ridiculously strong. That's actually an Oman. Get up there. Bull crap. That's such a bunch of BS. Holy crap. This is so stupid. His, his divisions are overpowered. Literally overpowered. There's nothing we can do against him. What the heck? Uh, you know what? This is one of the rare times I actually have to build a lot of forts then. Because I can't do anything. His divisions are completely overpowered and we have air superiority and there's nothing we can do about that. Complete and utter BS. Oh, good. He's out of manpower? Good. Jesus Christ, that's so ridiculously strong. Come on, get to Irkutsk. Jesus Christ. Ooh, at first, I thought we were defeated. I'm like, oh, I don't think so. Station lost, whatever. Um, For now... Ooh, cut him off. There you go. If you don't like that, kill him off. Kill every single one of these pieces of garbage off. I will personally kill Rurik off then. If he's going to be like this. Good. Do you like that? Do you really like that? Rurik? We lost another division. Screw this guy. Hope you like resistance there, you piece of garbage. Oh, we got it back. Good. Good. Yeah, no, he's completely overpowered. We're going to need a lot of equipment for this. So, what do we need? Anti-tank, artillery, guns. Okay, now we're going to buy stuff from the Japanese. Hello, Japan. Thank you for the goods. Thank you for, thank you for all the goods. I mean, look at that. Ridiculous. How is he able to do all this stuff? I might have to go back to an earlier save to, to prepare ourselves a little bit better for this. Yeah, i got to go back to an earlier save. Welp, everyone. We are here now, July 10th, 1970. And I've got to talk about Rurikus. There's something wrong about him. Here are the cavalry so far. It's taken us this long to kill him off. I've still lost over a third of a million manpower. We have a few more divisions now, actually, and he's at the point of dying. So, like I said earlier, I went back to an earlier save, made our divisions, uh, you know, at least the best we can, 40 combat width, and, uh, yeah. Just trying to make sure that we can actually survive and win, but something, I don't know about Rurik, but he is overpowered. He's got to be 100% overpowered, because we're at political interference, you see. And so, he's actually a professional army, but as you see here... There's not a massive difference between political interference and professional army. We get slightly you know, worse recovery rate, slightly worse attack and defense organization. But let's check Rurik out, shall we? He's got 37 divisions. He's still got his stuff normally. Um, but he is on professional army. He's on experienced industrial base. He's no manpower, of course. And when I went back to the state before like the war even started, he had 80 factories. 80 factories total. So, And we had 140 to start with. So I'm not sure what, what that's about, especially... If we look here, look at the Siberian plan. He actually hurt himself quite a bit with consumer goods factors, so he can't produce that much with 20% consumer goods there. So, I mean, he's sure he gets a little bit more attack here, 3.5%, a little more organization, uh, you get more recovery rate or whatever. Uh, not, that doesn't really do too much here for national spirits. He's got the Nova Siberia's air plant, plant, which means nothing if he can't really use it, since we had air superiority the entire time. And... Leader experience gain. His, our, his leaders, his generals aren't any better than ours, really. He's got a little bit more attack and defense there, especially for defense, part of the king. But honestly, there's nothing here that tells me why his force was so strong, especially when our guys were fully entrenched and they were and 40 combo with, and his enemy, his soldiers were still beating us up, still pushing our 40 combo with divisions away. Like that Ivan Yakolev here gives him more defense, but that's not attack. Like, I don't understand... Oh. Wow, 80% utilization, huh? Uh, okay, well, he's, he's building a lot. Equal rights, women in the workplace. So, I don't see anything here that honestly makes him look any more overpowered, but he still was. Like, I don't understand. I mean, he's got, like, a, like what, three times his population size? But that should, shouldn't do anything. That, that literally shouldn't change a single thing here. Oh, they don't like child labor, huh? So, I'm not really sure what happened, but... As you can see, we're out of manpower completely. I've actually gone ahead and increased our support with the Japanese. But, oh, get the basin cool, but, I don't know. Something about Rurik, there might be something in the game files that make him just overpowered. Because we still can't beat him in some areas. We still can't beat him with absolute dominance. I'm sure, we don't have, like, oh, what, we got some ground attack doing some good stuff here. But even then, it took way too much effort to kill this guy off. So, 
Rurik, I think, needs a nerf. He definitely needs a nerf. Even with, like, him not even going for, like, the good parts of the Siberian plan. It's... He was still overpowered. Like, even entrenched, we still couldn't do jack squat. Which makes zero sense. Especially when we have air superiority. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm a ragey, but... This literally makes no sense how strong he is. Considering that we had a third of a bigger industry, air superiority... 40 combat with infantry divisions. Not that much manpower, of course, after we made everything 40 combat with. But we did get the extra 150,000 manpower to begin with, but... Something something has had to give with Rurik. Because he's overpowered. I think he needs a nerf. He needs at least some sort of slight nerf, because apparently, just by existing, he gets he's stronger. But let's reunify this part of Siberia and get some more stability, shall we? Cool. The Regency of Siberia. Extra influence of Kazakhstan. I'm going to go in immediately. I don't care. We've got it. We've got to do this because I've lost way too many soldiers just for this. So, uh, actually, let's see how strong are these guys. Uh, they got a crap ton of manpower. Loads of divisions. If that's the case, we got to go. We're already out of all divisions. Holy crap! Uh, but my God, that that was insane. But the Tsar's speech, shall we? Mikhail, Tsar Mikhail, his authority now submitted after the fall of Shepanov has decided to take to the air waves to announce his new era in the history of Russia. An era of freedom, prosperity, and individual liberty, where all Russians, rich or poor, educated or illiterate, will have the chance to live in harmony and peace. Of course, the Tsar actually has to know how to say that in Russian. Mikhail was born in France and spent his life just about everywhere but Russia. When he was kidnapped and brought to the city of Cheetah as a prisoner in all but name, he was forced to uh, read speeches phonetically, frequently not even aware of what he was saying, even now his Russian is poor. But... This is apparently not dissuaded the reinvigorated monarch who's consulted with Mikhailov to get a full-time language tutor so they can finally learn the language of his people. But I'm going to end the campaign there just because I am still pissed off about Rurik. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will end this campaign and hopefully beat up these folks in West Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.